G'day and welcome back to the Weedy Garden. First episode of season two, you beauty! Yoo-hoo! Yeah. I've mentioned the word photosynthesis a lot of times on my videos and also on my movie, but I've never really talked about it. Jesus, the sun's bright today. Actually, the sun is what I'm gonna talk about on this video. Photosynthesis, okay? It's that chemical reaction which happens in nature when sunlight lands on a leaf, but I've never really talked about it or made a video about it. So today I will. Once I understood the whole story, it helped me get the best out of my veggie garden. Veggies get bigger, fruit get bigger. It's wonderful how much difference the sun makes. When I was a child, my mother taught me that plants get their energy from the sun. I thought she meant that they get all their energy from the sun, but the story goes a lot deeper than that. She called it photosynthesis. The green color in the leaf is chlorophyll. I called it plant blood and it can change sunlight into energy so all the plants can live. I used to lay on my back on the grass on a summer's day and look at the sun with closed eyes, listening to all the sounds it made. I felt safe and comfortable and energized, pretending to be a plant with green blood. From that point on, I knew that plants love sunshine. So did I. And that was all I really needed to know. I remembered it all these years because it started with the word photo. It was that part of the word that I was more interested in. You see, photo means light. A light particle is called a photon. And a photograph is actually a photon graph, or a graph of light. The colours of the rainbow put together for our sight in a graph that we can read. A photograph. I didn't fully understand what photosynthesis was all about. I was happy making photos playing with the light in my camera. I actually made a living taking photos until March 2020 when I decided to start this veggie patch. And I switched from taking photos to making videos. And I started this channel. It was then I started to really understand how photosynthesis works. And in this video, I would like to share the story of photosynthesis the way I see it. Right from where it starts inside the sun. It's a massive ball of hydrogen particles. Do you know that the sun is 1.3 million times larger than Earth? You can see on page 232 of my book, I've shown it like this. See, the little green dot is about the size of Earth. At any given moment is a free download for all patrons of the Weedy Garden, by the way. Okay, if this little grain of sand was the Earth, and this orange bike helmet was the sun, I'll show you how far apart they are. See. I'll put earth down here and I'll walk with the sun on my head all the way over here. This is about the scale of it from the earth to the sun, from the sun to the earth. So the story really starts here about 147 million kilometers away inside the sun. The sun's a massive ball of hydrogen particles. There's gazillions of them and they're all flying around trying to go somewhere with nowhere to go. And every second, trillions of these tiny hydrogen particles, they crash into each other. And a tiny nuclear explosion turns them into helium. When it happens, a tiny spark and some energy is released, and that little bit of energy is called a photon, and it wants to escape. Just like the bubble underwater wants to escape, it wants to reach the surface. It takes about 10,000 years for it to get out of the sun, but that depends. Like if you've got the sun, is that big? And the photon particles are hitting the middle of the sun, it takes about 150,000 years. But if the explosion happens like here on the sun, then it only takes about 10,000 years. But when it gets out, it takes about eight minutes and 20 seconds for that light to leave the sun. It goes through the photosphere and it leaves the sun. It takes about eight minutes and 20 seconds and it hits the earth. It lands everywhere. So when the light hits the leaf, the leaf absorbs all the colors of the rainbow, except for the green color. It reflects the green color. So that's why the leaves look green to us. When that sunlight hits the leaf, a 
chemical chain reaction begins. Through these tiny little mouths on the underside of the leaf, they're called the stomata. They breathe the carbon dioxide and the roots bring the water up. When the carbon dioxide and the water mix with the sunlight, it changes form into oxygen and sugar. Now, usually this story of photosynthesis stops here. But for me, it's just beginning. So why do plants even want to make sugar? Glucose is used by plants for energy and to make other substances like cellulose and starch. Cellulose is used in building the wall of the cell of the plant. So they produce glucose, they store it as cellulose during the day and they use it to grow during the night. But there's more to the process than that. You see, this story continues down under the ground, into the soil and around the roots, a space called the rhizosphere. This is the environment which is micromillimeters around the actual root of the plants. The rhizosphere is where microbes live and it's the microbes that produce the food for the plant. So to explain what I mean about the importance of the sun, for, for a plant. Look at this little cassava plant down here. See how big this one is? That was planted at the same time as the ones at the back here. See this little one? It's underneath the banana trees. So it's not getting very much light. It gets a little bit of light in the morning when the sun shines through here, compared to this one. Check out the size of this cassava. They were both planted at the same time, but this one's sitting outside underneath the sunshine all day long, okay? And it's producing much more sugar so the roots are excreting much more sugar, which are attracting much more fungi and bacteria towards the root system, towards the rhizosphere. And what happens is underneath the roots there, they get close to the roots because they like that sugar. Just like in episode one where I made the bacteria juice, uh, I give them the molasses, right? So they like the sugar. So we know they like sugar. So does the plant, it knows it likes sugar too. So it'll excrete sugar through its roots to attract those bacteria close to its roots. And the rhizosphere is the area that's kind of like coating the roots. And when the fungi and the bacteria get into that area, what the plant does, it actually sucks them up through the cells of its roots. They get inside the plant and it sort of dissolves them. It gets like flooded with nitrates, which dissolve the shell of, of the bacteria. And, and, and that releases the nutrients into the plant and then they basically spit them out again through the little hairs on the side of the roots. Some of the bacteria survive, but some of them don't survive. So if you think about it, actually a plant is actually, it's actually a carnivore because it's eating all the bacteria. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Beautiful, healthy, happy plants and lots of sunshine. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later. Oh yeah, and don't forget to check out my movie. You can find a link to the movie in the descriptions.
baby. Oh, sweetheart. Oh my God, this is absolutely magical. Oh, honey, that looks amazing. Oh, <laughs> sweetheart. Woo! 